In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this multi view portraits using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up, guys? Thrill here, and as you can see, this is the final output. Now, this effect is actually inspired by someone else's photography work. If you go to this website, you can see the photographers, all the different projects and the photographer actually uh, printed out pictures and arranged them in a way. So it looks, uh, it creates this really fantastic looking portraits. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, that looks awesome. And then thought, well, we can actually create something similar to this in Photoshop. And I ended up creating this effect. To start the effect, let's create the new document, go to file and create a new document. And here my size is 1920 by 2600 pixels, resolution is 72 and create it. First thing we have to create a shape. For that, right click here and select your rectangle tool and then draw a shape. Uh, and in the shape, you can keep it any color that is not white because background is already white. So double click here and I'm gonna keep it something like this, close it. Now I'm going to apply some shadows because it will help us separate one piece from the another. For that right click here and then select blending option and here go and select your drop shadows and in the drop shadow for now uh, keep the opacity like 40, 45 and the distance 25, size 10. We will change it later for every individual piece but for now keep this, hit ok. Now let's place in the image. For that go to file and then select place embedded. Here select this photo and then place it, uh, move it around here like this, confirm it. Now to make sure that the photo only shows up on the shape, make sure first thing that the photo is on top of the shape, then right click on the layer here and select create clipping mask. So now it will only show up inside the rectangle. Uh, few basics, uh, first if you want to move the photo, select your move tool and then you can move it around. If you want to move the shape, select the rectangle and move it around. And if you want to move both of them together, hold your control key and select both of them and now we can move entire thing around. Clear? Now to only make the photo bigger, activate your photo, then press control T and then I'm gonna make it big. And if it goes outside or it looks crazy big, it's completely normal, you are supposed to do that. So for here, I think I only want this portion, rotate it around a little bit like this and confirm it and if you want to make both of them big together the same thing hold your control key select them press control t and then boom you can make it bigger or smaller but i think this size is enough now we need to make a copy of it so make sure that both of these are selected hold your control key again and select both of them then press control j so now you have a copy of the shape and the photo both now when you move it around, as you can see, so keep the shape here somewhere, then select the top photo, not the both, only the photo, and then move it around like this. So you can, you know, place it here like this. And the thing is, make sure it's not exactly same, like it doesn't have to match properly. So I'm gonna make, like press Ctrl T, and make it actually slightly big. So it's like out of proportion a little bit. That's what we need. Uh, and also see uh, the nose is not aligning we want things like that make another copy of it so hold your control key select the shape and the model both then press ctrl j and move this one around here like this now another thing you can do is that make sure that in the middle portion the shapes are in vertical format and in the side they're actually horizontal uh, so select this shape only the shape not the model just the shape then press Ctrl T, hold your shift key and move it around like this and confirm it. It allows you to have more symmetry in your photo. So select the photo here and then I'm going to move it around like this. Now at the moment it doesn't look very attractive because the pieces are actually out of order. You will have to move it back and forth a little bit. For example, this piece at the top. So let's select both of them. I'm going to hold my Ctrl key, select both of them. And then when I select them and place them under this shape, it actually looks a lot better. Not only that, but if I select this two, uh, as you can see, this one, and place them in between here, like this, it also again looks a lot better. 
it's going to be a lot of trial and error. You can basically call it like trial and error effect and it's the same thing. These are the basics that you really need to keep in mind. Now I'm gonna create one more shape and then teach you a trick. And again, I'm gonna go and place it under the eye. So let's go and place it here like this. So it's at the bottom. And at first it will look like this, that the things are not perfect and out of order and stuff like that. It's supposed to happen. Here's the situation, right? We have so many layers already. We just created four shapes. And like, let's say if I want to move this particular uh, layer, right? So how am I gonna do that? You cannot always go and turn it on and off and like, yeah, which one is this and that? There's a simple trick. Make sure you have selected your move tool, then hold your control key and let's select something else, okay? Now hold your control key and click on the layer and it will automatically select that. So now I have selected this and, uh, and let's move it around a bit. See? Again, uh, let's say if I want to move the forehead. So hold your control key, click on the forehead and you can move it around like this. Or you can select shape and the both and then you can move it around. So this will literally save your life. Keep this trick in mind. Hold your control key and click at whatever you want to move around and you can do it. And that's actually the pretty much entire effect. You keep making the copies and rearranging them until they look good. And here's another thing. What if you want to move everything at once? So for that, select the layer at the bottom, then hold your shift key and select the layer at the top and then you can move it around everything at once you can also press ctrl t and make everything big or small at once it's really convenient so uh, that's another nifty tip now i'm gonna fast forward and finish up the portrait Okay, I did my best to recreate what I did in original file, but it's difficult. But this looks really flat, like super super flat, there's no depth, but I found a way to fix it. You see, uh, you start manipulating the distance of the shadow. That sounds crazy, it's super simple. Uh, look at the shape which is on the top. So this shape, it's like really forward. Hold your control key and click on the shape. Okay, ready? Now actually we need the shape, so activate the shape. Then double click on the FX menu and here you go to your drop shadow and increase the distance, as you can see, like this. And automatically it get, it has so much more depth. So you keep the distance somewhere around like 70-80%, so 79 looks good. Hit OK. You can also manipulate, you know, the opacity a little bit, so go and maybe increase or decrease the opacity. Uh, 28 looks nice hit ok after that you find the shape that's you know next to it or maybe which is also on top so this is for example so control click on that so you have the photo select the shape of that photo uh, double click on the drop shadow and here go and increase the distance but as you can see the last time we had the distance of what 80 79 80 so this time i'm gonna keep it like 75 73 you actually start decreasing the distance a little bit and also opacity like uh, it depends whatever looks good so 20 25 percent then go and hit okay so do it for every single shape as you start getting you know further and further away at the edge uh, keep the shadow closer and as you get to the center keep the distance more it will give you so much depth i cannot even explain so do it for all the layers
Cool, now, now it's time to create shadows that overlap each other. And for that, we need to actually group everything. It's super easy, just scroll down, select the shape at the bottom, uh, layer at the bottom, hold your shift key and click the layer at the top. So it will select everything and then press Ctrl G. So it's in a single group and super easy to manage. Now we will actually apply a shadow on the group. For that, right click again, go to blending options and here select a drop shadow. And as you can see, now the entire group has its shadow. I'm going to make the opacity 100 so you can see. You see the shadow? Obviously, it's too much. So I'm going to go and reduce the opacity a little bit and then increase the distance. So, you know, there is a bit more variety and you can also like move it around a little bit. Looking good, then hit OK. I wanted to add even more shadows and depth and for that I just simply made copy of the group. So make sure group is active then press Ctrl J. Now select the bottom one, this one and move it around a little bit like this. And then just keep it somewhere around here then go to drop shadow and reduce the opacity even more. So it's not you know too darkish and increase the size a bit then hit OK. So this way you can add as many shadows you like, just keep copying the group. Now let's do some color correction and it's also really important part of this effect, the color correction. So for that, first of all, I'm going to create new adjustment layer and select curves. And in the curves, make it a little bit brighter and then make it a bit darker from here. So we have good amount of contrast in the photo. Then go and close it. Now I'm going to fade out the shadows a little bit to give it that, you know, really flat look. For that, create new adjustment layer and select exposure. In the exposure, increase your offset a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. I think this is good enough. Then go and close it. And you can also make it black and white. For that, go to your adjustment and select black and white. But make sure your black and white is under your curves. So you don't lose the contrast, you know. So that's pretty much it. This is the final output. Now all you have to do is just go back and adjust thing again and again. So I really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions feel free to ask me in comment section below. Till then goodbye take care and have some fun with Photoshop.